Before we get into today's show, just want to promote the fact that Son of Chelsea has been nominated as a finalist in this year's Football Content Awards taking place at Anfield this November. We have been nominated in the Best Premier League Club Content Creator category and you can vote for Son of Chelsea by two ways. Go to footballcontentawards.com slash voting. Scroll down to the correct category, use the drop down menu and you can vote for Son of Chelsea there. Or you can go to the Football Content Awards official Instagram page, find the category post and tag at Son of Chelsea below and that also counts as a vote towards us. Thank you for all the support on the channel, it's really humbling and the continued support on the content and the interactions, it's really appreciated. This feels like the culmination of a lot of work. If you can share this, if you can vote, it'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Welcome to Dear Chelsea. I am Daniel Childs. This is a brand new series I'm starting where I hope to interview some fascinating guests around Chelsea Football Club. Could be fans, pundits, journalists, reporters, ex-players, whatever regarding Chelsea and their love for the club. Where did it begin? Some of their favourite stories and more. We start this series with a brilliant guest and that is Gary Hayes. Gary I'm sure is very well known to a lot of you within the Chelsea community. Most recently his massive projects podcast series The Blueprint how Chelsea FC changed football forever. It is an incredible series that is a must listen for every Chelsea fan but Gary gives us some of the behind the scenes insight in terms of his favourite guests in terms of what the series meant to him emotionally I think that's going to be quite relatable of course he also has worked as a reporter kind of the leading correspondent for Bleacher Report during the period where Chelsea won the Premier League title under Antonio Conte so we get into some of that and as well break down the latest regarding Chelsea Mauricio Pochettino the criticism is it fair criticism of the current ownership and what the future of Chelsea Football Club looks like. If you want to support the show, really easy to do on YouTube. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to get the latest Chelsea content on podcast. Please do give us a five-star review. It really does help out and share it around with your friends so more Chelsea fans can get involved in the community. But let's get to the conversation now. The first episode of Dear Chelsea with Gary Hayes. Let's do some current Chelsea stuff. Um... Depending on when this is released, Chelsea have just won a game. Well, two games in a row, which feels pretty weird in 2023. Uh, obviously being Fulham. I, I get the sense you're... And, and conversations we have had before on like the, the Chelsea with, with Kerry is, is you're much more of an optimistic, I think, fan. Is that fair to say? And, and you know, someone who you know, tries to look at things with perspective. And obviously that has been aided by looking back in Chelsea history and, and understanding how serious... And bad things could have been in the past and were in the past during different times. I mean, what is your take on this season, the state of the club? Because I, I know people and they're not just like online reactionaries. These are people who pour a lot of money in their their emotion and have been supporting Chelsea for a, for a long, long time. Feel what, Don't feel as connected to the club currently. Yeah, I... It's, it's not just a case of being optimistic for the sake of optimism. But I'll just try to look at things on their merits. Um, look, I, I don't know whether I'm an idiot or whether uh, I've just seen things from a different perspective because I was able to see the inner workings of a football club. Um, but I, I see what they're trying to do at Chelsea. And, you know, I've, I've, just to talk about the owners quickly, have they made mistakes? Of course they have. I think they got rid of Tuchel too quick. Uh, I think they got rid of Potter too quick. Um, and I hope they don't get rid of Pochettino too quick. Um, I think, you know, if they had kept Tuchel for last season to bed bed themselves in, you know, I don't, I don't think the season would have been as bad. If they had given Potter a pre-season, I think his ideas would have been coming to the fore more and the team would have been improving. I think there's that, that data, isn't there, that based on the, the Brighton metrics that um, you could see that Potter's Chelsea were actually getting better um, despite some of the results. Right. And then they, they, you know, they, they chopped him, but now they've got an incredible manager who I think you'd look at what he's done with Mudrick already. Mudrick's not the finished article by any stretch. You know, and, and I think it's the problem now with when it comes to discourse around football is that you'll praise a player I think you might have said this as well, actually, Dan, the other day when it's like, just because I'm praising a player for a good performance doesn't mean that he hasn't had bad performances or whatever, you know. 
and like to, and to use the case on Mudrick, just because he scored his first Chelsea goal now, I'm not saying he's Eden Hazard. Um, but what I am saying is that you can see the progress. You can see, and that is another step of the progress. And that is a tangible thing that you can look at and say, here is where things are going right. Is everything going right? No, it's not. But why should it be going right either? And I think that there's certain aspects of the media where they want to use data on transfers to, you know, as, as a stick to beat Chelsea with. And I think it's premature. How can you judge owners on 15, 16 months in ownership when they inherited a club that had been sanctioned? They've had to completely strip it back and almost rebuild it. Now, do I agree with everything they've done? No, I don't. I would have loved to have kept Mason Mount. But in his, and this is where the balance comes in football. You know, that doesn't mean that I support Mason Mount over Chelsea, but I would have loved to have had Mason Mount at Chelsea because what I'm all about is not young players for the sake of young players, but it's when you've got, you know, incredibly talented players like Mount that have proved it, that I think you should be doing everything to keep them because they are the heart and soul of Chelsea. Rhys James, Mason Mount, Conor Gallagher, those types of characters, you know, they are what makes... Chelsea, Chelsea. But do I think they should keep Trevor Chaloba? I love Trevor because he's come through the academy and he plays with his heart on his sleeve, but that's not enough to to be the club that Chelsea is now. So when you look at the players that are ahead, oh yeah, sorry, Levi Colville as well, right? The, the, they're players that, and Colville's got it. You can see he's got it, whereas Trevor is below that. Now, if Trevor wants to play the, the Ruben role of, I'm happy to be a utility player and do 15 to 20 appearances a season, Great, because your guys that keep that culture alive. But Trevor think, well, judging by it, Trevor wants to play every week. And when you've got the players ahead of him that Chelsea may have a sign, I don't think that's realistic, right? So I think there's the balance there. But then I'm completely distraught that um, we sold Mason Mount. But then I said in an overly dramatic message to um, Andy and Kerry the other day on our little Chelsea group, I just said the signing of... Um, Cole Palmer has mended my heart because I was just like, because Palmer, I've idolised, I say idolised, I've appreciated his talent since I saw him uh, in an FA Cup game, uh, an FA Youth Cup game. And then I just sort of, not track, you know, I haven't been like, I've watched Cole Palmer every week, but whenever I've seen a Man City game and I've seen him playing, I'm like, actually, I'm going to watch this because I want to watch him. And I remember just thinking, God, they've got Foden over there. And when Palmer matures, they're going to have Palmer there. They have got these two incredible... And look, I make no apologies for it. I love English players playing for Chelsea. Does that mean I want English players over any player? No, it doesn't. But when we've got talented English players playing for Chelsea because they, they're on merit, I love it because I'm English. I want to see English players play for Chelsea in the English league. That's not to be xenophobic in any stretch I, because I love Eden Hazard. I love... Gianfranco Zola, I idolised Viali as a kid, you know, but I like the balance of it. So, but I love it that these English young English talents, because I love the England team and I see it and I feel like the England team's going to have Ben Chilwell, Rhys James, Conor Gallagher, Cole Palmer, Raheem Sterling. You know, I'm like, Chelsea are feeding that team because then it gives me even more connection to the England team, right? And I'm sure that, you know, players... Uh, fans in Spain love seeing that Real Madrid and the Spanish national team, for instance. So, you know, I, I see Palmer, I just thought, you know, he is such a talented player. And then when we got him, I, just, I was in America and we signed him. I was like, is this for real? I had to, I had to message Louis. And I was like, Louis, have we just signed Cole Palmer? And he was like, yeah, I couldn't believe it. So then, and then you see him, I know everyone made a big deal about him coming on against Forest, but I, was, I said to Kerry about it, I goes, look, you can't, judge him on that. I said, just let him ease his way into his team. And then the last two games he's played, look, it's two games. We know it's two games, but you've seen it. You know it. You just see it and you know it. And he's going to, he's going to be, you know, one of the mainstays in this team. And my bold reaction to the last couple of games said, he's going to be player of the year this year. He reminds me of, he's like a hybrid of matter and Mount. And I, I absolutely adored Juan Mata. I, lo- I was gutted when we sold him. I was so gutted when we sold him that Man United magazine approached me and said, can you write a piece for us? And I did it. 
about how great matter is from a Chelsea fan's perspective. I don't want to touch that. I was like, I had to go and have a shower after and you know, use all my bloody um, antibacterial creams after writing for them. But, you know, so I'd look at it now. I just feel like stuff is happening. Are we going to win the tro- a trophy this year? Probably the Carabao Cup, hopefully. Are we going to win the league? No. Will we get in the Champions League? I don't know. But if we don't, I'm not bothered. Because it's what's coming beyond that. I, I do think that I have I've been a little bit more critical of the the ownership um, in the past few months. I mean, I guess it's it's things that I've heard, um, even stuff maybe not reported that um, that doesn't that doesn't sound great to me. Um, I thought the away subsidy decision was a real kick in the teeth. I, I thought that it was a really insulting decision, and I I understand people's fury at that, and I just thought it I. It was just a PR own goal. Like it's just, it, it was just kicking yourself, and and, and you know, it it just it didn't make a lot of sense. And and I I, I do have a general fear, and and you know, you do, I think you just articulated the importance of academy talent or homegrown talent in the first team. Uh, that I thought was just the biggest, the, the the greatest thing about the transfer ban was that it finally made the club in 2019 actually look inwards and go, actually, we have some talent here that we could play in the first team. And I, I, I would like to think that that was the turning point. And I really hope that it doesn't turn around again. And we, because I, I do have a slight concern that with the way we were trying to flog Ian Matsu and Trevor Chalibur and even Conor Gallagher in the last window, I, I, I do, I, I, I think the jury's out, right? And I want to see what happens in that aspect in the coming months. But I, I'm not, I'm probably more in the middle, a little bit more positive about things than maybe some other people. I guess that's just a bit like you. I'm I'm just kind of of that nature. Um, I'm not so doom and gloom that everything is rubbish and my mind can't be changed and they are the worst owners in the world and they've got absolutely no idea what they're doing. I'm not to that level. Uh, but I, 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 do, I do get people's feeling. And I think it, it's something that you referenced earlier about the sanctions period. And I, I don't, think maybe people still don't realize even it, it, though when you actually look at it in terms of like actual days from the sanctions to being taken over it actually wasn't that long but the impact i think it had on all of us as supporters that that feeling of fear of actually the club could go under here like what is the future of chelsea going to be you, you've been settled in this uh way of chelsea for a long period of time like basically 20 years and then everything gets thrown up in the air I don't know if you feel the same way. I, I still feel that Chelsea, especially since the last title win, don't quite know what the identity of the club should be, is, will be. And and I know that's to some people they may laugh because we've won a Champions League within that time. But <coughs> it still kind of feels to me like Chelsea, what, what the next era of Chelsea is going to be is still very much undecided. And I feel like if you ask 10 Chelsea fans, they pro- they might give you 10 different answers. Yeah, I think you're right. But then my my concern with this, and I think what you're saying is right about the ownership, is that you're not completely sold on them, but you're not completely against them. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I, I probably sit a little bit further to the idea of being with them. But I think that's just my, you know, my nature. And maybe I'm a bit naive, but, <clears throat> you know, to give them a credit, I think they're trying to do a lot of things and they're trying to do it quick. They're not sitting there going, hey, we've got a 10-year plan to win the title. They're going, no, we want to win the title as soon as possible, but we know we've got to go through this pain first, right? Because I think they've had to... You look at what they've done behind the scenes. They've completely gutted the club and had to build it from the bottom up, right? Because they've got rid of... Because they inherited a club that didn't have much structure. Because you've got to understand, you know, Chelsea was run. Abramovich built Cobham, you know, put the training ground in place and, and everything and did, did other stuff. But, you know, and the academy's there. But the reason why Chelsea had problems of those players crossing the road was there was never any structure because the managerial turnover was such that where Chelsea, are, what Chelsea are doing now is they're trying to build it. And there's the negatives in that as they're trying to build it, they've gone through a few managers within a year. But I think they've got the right guy now. Uh, who maybe they should have got from the outset. Um, there's been a few knee-jerk, panicked um, decisions. Like I think getting rid of Potter was, I think, tough. You know, just because, again, I, I, I can't say whether Potter was going to be a success or not. Um, but you look at his track record and you think wherever where he's gone, he's needed time. And that's what 
then people can go, yeah, but this is Chelsea and you haven't got that. But to bring it all back to what you're saying about what the identity of this team is, it's starting to form. You can see it. And after last season, when we lost away against Man United, I was I saw um, Bruno, you know, giving some jip to Enzo and no one ran up to protect him. And Enzo was there with like seven United players around him. And I just thought, Lamps is on the sideline watching that. And he knows when he was playing, that, that didn't happen. This team, his teams didn't get bullied. And even, you know, Right up to when Conte left, that didn't happen. When Lamps was there, that didn't happen. And suddenly, but that's what I mean about this this hangover of the sanctions. And then all these changes have happened. And I feel like the club lost itself a little bit, but I feel like it is coming back because you look at after, and, and the reason it's coming back as well is because of the academy players. Like you see Colwell's celebration with Mudrick after that goal and the way he's into it. And you see um, when Jackson scored against Brighton in the Cup last week, everyone was with him. And you see the way Gallagher's playing. And Gallagher with the armband at the moment, being in the middle of the pitch, being able to influence the game more than Reese James perhaps out on the right because Reese has been injured. And Gallagher's just sort of, the last few weeks, just looks like he's completely matured and is becoming more consistent and more confident in his role in the team, right? And they're the guys that turn up and tell those players why we can't lose to Spurs in a few weeks. And then you see after, you know, um, the end of the game when Desazi, has got his top off and he's celebrating with the players and he's pushing them around. I feel like they're getting some camaraderie. And as you see it now, you're like, okay, characters are starting to form here. And it's, they've got a long way to go to match anything that's happened in the last 20 years. But they're start, I feel like they're recreating this team in, in their vision with their identity. They need more bite. Because as Chelsea fans, that's what we like, right? But then you see Breuer. And I'm like... You're the sort of B that I like up front because you're you're not on the level of Diego Costa yet, but you could be. And, you know, he just bulldozes players. And you, you, I go watch matches and I sit there as an observer. I love hearing the, when the crowd's singing, I just watch. I don't sing or anything. Um, I think that's just because I've worked so much on the other side that it just strips it out of you, right? And now I'm 41 and past it and I just sort of like watching other people have fun. Um, but when Breuer came on against Villa for a long time, it's the first time I got up out of my seat and was effing and jeffing because I just saw him run through those Villa defenders. And I was like, that's what I want to see. And I think more characters like that in this team, that builds that identity because I feel there's a camaraderie coming and that's what's going to gel this team together because they're all young and they're going to mature together in the way that Lamps and JT matured together and that team came together around them. I don't know who those leaders are going to be yet uh, because I, I think that's missing in this team. But there's a hint of it. There's a hint of it. And you can't turn your back on it while there's a hint of it. And it's going to get better. I think it's, you know, my prediction at the start of the season was August and September would be horrible and then we'd start looking better in November. Um, I don't know whether you know the last two matches of wins is a hint of that. You know, We've got to beat Burnley at the weekend. Hopefully we do. We should. Um, and then we've got those tricky fixtures, but that's what builds character, you know. You don't just you don't you're not, you're not just born with character. You've got to go through something to get character. You know, I'm sure you've gone through stuff in life that you've gone. I'm not going to let that happen again. I've gone through, you know, stuff. You know, where just to have the ambition and desire to do the blueprint stuff. I went through in my career to go. You know what? I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to make it work, and hopefully it does. And somehow I got there. Whether it's worked or not isn't. My, you know, I, I can't say whether it has. It's down to the people that listen to it to say whether it has. But, you know, you've got to go through stuff collectively to build that. And I think that's what this team's going through. 